sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. White letters, ramble. That's us. That's the whole show. And we're here until midnight tonight. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, guess who's here? Guess who's uh, with us from uh, Massachusetts? Massachusetts, Worcester, Massachusetts. Worcester, Massachusetts. Boy, it's getting. Uh, you can probably come down here now. Yeah, pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Love to see you. You know. That'd be great. That'd be fun. Oh, terrific. Terrific. Uh, has Broadway open yet? Broadway opens in uh, the, the, the August, I think. Really? Yeah, I think they was. I I don't think they. It's not like they said, okay, uh, uh, we got to wait till August because more disease takes place in a theater or whatever. I think it's that they really they've been da- dark for what a year, oh, and a, uh, year and a quarter, right. and it'll be a year and a half by then. And I think they have to do something to kind of get the the stuff going, you know. Yeah, they need to go back to rehearsals. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some of the shows are not reopening. Uh, Which ones? The, well, for instance, we had tickets to West Side Story. Uh huh. And they've canceled it. Yeah. So they refund it. Yeah, five hundred bucks, by the way. Wait for two tickets. Two tickets. Two tickets. And those weren't well, orchestra seats either. To West Side Story. Yep. Yep. And, I should play that's old as the hills. Well, I think one of the reasons they probably, I would say the reason why they closed it down or they, they decided not to open it up, I think is because the Spielberg movie is coming out in December. What and, movie? And I, West Side Story. Again? He, yeah. He's doing West Side Story, and it looks good, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, because they have actual Puerto Ricans playing the parts. Imagine that. <laughs> I mean... Uh, you know, uh, I think it was Rita Moreno. That she said that she, she, you know, she loved being in the film. I mean, that it was a good point in her career, but that she hated the fact that Natalie Wood. They had to like put a tan makeup on her to make her look Puerto Rican. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. And that it really should have gone. She probably felt it should have gone to her, and she probably would have been a terrific Maria. Oh yeah. You know. But uh, 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 but she is now the executive producer of the new version. Oh, really? Yeah. And I've seen some trailers from it, and it actually looks like I might like it better than the original. The original, huh. bo- the original bothered me on so many different levels. Well, you know? yeah. I mean, the, the, Natalie Wood, number one, wasn't Puerto Rican. Wasn't even, it didn't even look to be... Uh, Hispanic, Puerto Rican. Hispanic on any level, right, right, uh, right, right. And then um, uh, she also didn't sing in that film. Oh, I didn't know that. No, she was. Her voice was done by Marnie Nixon, uh, who uh, did a lot of uh, voices for people. She did Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady. Really? Yes. Marnie Nixon was this woman who was a great talent, made a lot of hit movies was never given credit at the time. Really? Because they didn't want people to know that, uh, you know, that uh, Audrey Hepburn wasn't really singing. But Could that's Audrey Hepburn not sing? Well, she could sing, but she couldn't sing well enough to do My Fair Lady. Right. Okay, right. that takes a right. certain kind of semi-operatic uh, style. Right. And she didn't have it. It's supposedly, in the movie, there are scenes where she did actually sing. Uh, huh. But for the most part, it's Marnie Nixon. So it was Marnie Nixon in West Side Story too for Natalie Wood. So Natalie Wood not only couldn't sing, but she also wasn't uh, of Hispanic descent. At all. At all. And I mean, I love Natalie Wood, you know. Sure. But I probably liked her the least in this film for exactly that reason, that I didn't believe right. she was Hispanic, you know. I wonder how they're going to do the uh, fight scenes in the new movie. Uh, probably, probably a little more action since you know Spielberg's an action director. Right, 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 right. 
But I mean, it, it, the thing is, it, it, so many people do parodies of West Side Story. Right. And when you do parodies of something, you got to know it was not really good. Because people are finding the faults and, and then, right. you, you know, it, 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 extruding them into a, a, just a horrible thing. So, you know, the here come the Jets, where the Jets, all the way. It, it's, right. it, it's kind of a dated concept. So I hope that Spielberg brings it up to date, you know. You think they're going to update the songs? Uh, they, did, they did away with uh, I Feel Pretty, I think. Really? Yeah. They felt that was too, that was not a Hispanic kind of song. You know, it didn't have that that flavor, you know. Right, and, uh, right, right, right. Everybody in the original, originally it was supposed to be left out of the movie. And uh, they they did it anyway. So I th I hear they've done away with it in this film. So they, they recast the entire movie? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Red, Rita Moreno is in it, but she's not playing the same part. Right. 50 years later or whatever. But, uh, uh, you know, it's a whole a whole new cast, of course. It has to be. The rest of the cast is pretty much dead, you know. Yeah, and they're supposed to be teenagers, aren't they? That's the other problem. Yes, yeah. with Natalie Wood. She wasn't a teenager, neither was Richard Bamer, who I couldn't stand. I thought he was just horrible. Which one was he? He was Tony. Oh, really? Yeah. And I, he just, he was off-putting to me. And finally, he got a part, eventually, that, that off-puttingness worked. He was on, he played the uh, hotel owner on Twin Peaks. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. How do I know this shit? What, what, what is with my brain? What, what is this up here that retains certain knowledge and can't remember the name of my wife? You know, right. Uh, well, I'm pretty much the same way. I come up with these facts, and I have no idea why I remember them. Yesterday, I was really fucked. Okay, I why was, is that? Well, I, uh, allergies. My eyes were just—they felt like raw meat. Oh God. Okay, you know the feeling from yeah. allergies. And today they're much better. Uh, they're still a little teary, but they're much better. Uh, and so last night when I when I closed off the show, I did everything wrong that I had to do. And things I do every day by rote just right. completely eluded me. You know, so. Uh, I, 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 so there are days like that, and I'm beginning to wonder: is this is this it? You know, am I getting to the point where I'm not going to remember anything? No. No, I also, maybe, yeah, I, you know, maybe a little senile, but not not bad. Yeah, yeah, I don't seem senile, do I? Not at all. But then again, no, I, you, you seem right on top well, of it. Well, because I'm on now, I go into Alex Bennett mode. Right. You know, it's like I went. I saw Bob Hope once. I think I maybe have mentioned this to you on the Letterman show, and they said, uh, "Oh, look who's here!" And they took a shot of the door of the studio, and standing there was. Bob Hope, all hunched up, like this, right? right? And he said, look who's here, and the camera was on him, and he didn't know it was on him. And he said, it's Bob Hope. And he all of a sudden stands up and becomes Bob Hope. Sure. No, I get it. He goes it. right in, and he, yeah, well, you know, really, i got to tell you, hey. You know, right, well, it's just like, Alex, if you were sick, say you had the flu really badly, yeah. and you had to do a show, you had to leave the flu off stage, you had to become... Stephen Kravitz, the comic. They don't care that you're sick. Yeah, they don't the care. The audience. No, no, no. So, you know. But some days it's hard. I mean, like yesterday, I mean, I did a show and I was like struggling. I was leaving at the clock and I went only two minutes have passed, you know. I Who mean, are you I, doing it with? I do the nightly show. I do a show oh, okay. four nights a week. That's where we put you you on at the beginning of oh, is that right? one of the episodes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, what do people have to say after the show? Do, do they enjoy it when me and you talk? I don't know. Nobody ever lets me know whether they enjoy it or not. <laughs> so we're just doing this for us. Basically, listen, if we weren't doing it for us, there'd be no reason to do it. Right. Let me put it that I agree. Way. And then I, you know, then I look around, I go over, I, I, I get all depressed because the numbers are low about the number of people that are watching and so on. And so right. On. And then I go over and I, I, I look at Jake Johansson's uh, YouTube thing. Oh, I didn't know he had one. Yeah, he's got one. 
And, you know, Jake Johansson, pretty well-known guy. You know, sure. yeah. He has less people watching him than watch me. Really? And I think my numbers are shit. Does Jake have guests? Huh? No, just him. Just him what? Talking? Talk, talking, yeah. Yeah. It, people should watch it. He's pretty good, you know. Really? But more than the, what did I see? I say 98 people who watched him yesterday. Really? Well. But, but, <laughs> I got to tell you. To some people, that 98 people is a lot. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's better than eight people. Do you know how many supposed podcasts there are out there? Millions. Four. What is it? What did I read? Five, three million? Something like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How, how do I get uh, above that noise? Hey, look at me. I'm here now. Right, 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 right. I'm, I'm still doing this, and I'm still doing it at a high level. Well, I, I am, I've been doing a little research. I'm trying to figure out how you play YouTube. And it's it's a matter of uh, titling something and titling it in a way that people just go for it, right? Right. And what you do is you somewhere in there you put everything in caps, right? Really? Uh, yeah. And usually the things that do really well are the 10 things you didn't know about Star Trek. <laughs> no, I, I believe it. One million views. Uh, ten things you didn't know about uh, Bullet, the movie. Oh, right. 300,000 views. I mean, right, right, right. So I'm thinking of doing, I don't know, just titling it something like ten things you didn't know about out, about uh, something or another, and then just do my show. <laughs> you know, fuck them. If they come in and watch it and they don't, you know... Right. Also, right below us now, if you're looking at us on YouTube, is a subscribe button. Now, what all these guys do is they announce, uh, before we get going, I want to remind you to push subscribe. Right, 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 right. right. But that's like, Alex, after shows, you know, there's one entrance and one exit into the club. Yeah. And as the crowd was leaving, yeah. comics would hang out basically fishing for compliments. You know, how'd you like me? How'd you like me? Hey, nice. I'm glad you came. And I could never do that. Yeah, I always yeah. hung out backstage, waited till the audience to leave. Well, right below us is the subscribe button. And whatever you do, ladies and gentlemen, don't push that button or your computer will burst into flames. <laughs> it, it's, no, it's, no, it's, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, it, God, it, God, you're doing it. Damn you. It's a dead man switch. It's a dead man switch, right. Right, it'll kill me if you do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I mean, I, just, I don't, I don't, you know, I mean. So I've been studying this whole thing, and and the titling of it is everything. When I just call Alex Bennett's ramble, who's gonna click on that? You know. Well, if they know you. Yeah, but you know, I'm I'm yesterday's cold soup. All right. Well, so am I. I mean, if I go back to San Francisco right now. There'll be some people who go, oh, Alex Bennett, I listened to you when I was in my crib. Right. You, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I, I listened to you in high school. Yeah. Uh, and there are other people who go, Alex who? Right. What, you're not Howard Stern? Right. You know, I mean, uh, and uh, you got to remember when we did the shows in San Francisco, that was what? That was 1980, 81, 80 I started in San Francisco again. Right. That's how many years ago? Right. It's like... Definitely. 41 years ago? 41 years ago. So if I, if I went back to San Francisco tomorrow to do a show, I don't think most people would were even born when I when I was doing my shows back then. You know? So uh, not at the peak of it. Yeah. So Alex Bennett the name doesn't have any it does have a certain cachet here in New York oddly enough. Right. Uh, but you know, I was going through a book. Somebody gave me a book. Sent me a book and it was uh, New York Radio, and it was pictures in pictures. New York Radio of all the people who right. worked New York Radio and so on, and starting with the old days when it was you know just they were putting two wires together like this, you know, right, all right, the right, way right, to right. the very end. And they have everybody that I ever worked with is in that book. Everybody, photographs of them. Here's right. here's Jim Kerr. Here's John Zachary. Here's blah blah blah. Allison Steele. The deep, the deep, the deep. You know the only person that isn't in that book. You. Me. Now, I'm right. not egotistical here, but let me just say, I wasn't just a passing story in New York radio. 
That's right. Okay. That's right. That, that's absolutely right. I mean, a thousand people stood outside a radio station protesting my firing. Okay. I had, really? Yeah, I had a full page article on me that weekend in the New York Times. Shouldn't that? Shouldn't there be at least one mention of me in this book somewhere? Right, 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 yeah. right. Well, I get the same thing. I mean, they did a documentary of uh, the comedy star, and I'm not in it at all, and I was pretty prevalent from 85 to 2000. Well, also, part of the problem is you're not that famous. You're not a Jay Leno, okay? Mm -hmm. And secondly, you're not in L.A. They couldn't, you know, they if they can't just drive down the freeway and go do a bit, with, you know, a setup with you, they're not right. going to do it. They're lazy. Right, 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 right. You know, it's right. what I used to say about working in San Francisco. You know, that whenever they do a story about radio and blah, 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 they would never come and interview me. They would never come and interview anybody in San Francisco because, oh, well, we got to go to San Francisco. But L.A., we got an office. In New York, we got an office. Right, 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 right. And so right, if you right. were either in L.A. or New York, excuse me, I'm still having problems with my eyes today, but they're just itchy. And so terrible. what, San Francisco is considered a secondary market? Well, it's not that it's a secondary market it's just not on the 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 trail okay in other words here i found when i worked in new york i had no problem getting press no problem right. because they were always looking for stories and they sure. were looking for stories that were easy to get they didn't have right. to travel to san francisco to interview me right okay and and so i suddenly became a big deal because i'm new york you know and then that sure. big deal in new york gets out there into the rest of the country. Um, so I got probably more press, I would say, the national press when I was working in New York. than when, And I was much bigger in San Francisco than I ever was in New York, okay? Oh, in San Francisco, come on, you are huge. Yeah, yeah. But people go, oh, huge in San Francisco, very nice, thank you. Uh, we're gonna go interview Howard Stern, he's in New York, he's right down the street. Right. See? Right. Right. Does that make sense? No. I mean, does it no. make sense that that's the reason why they don't? You know. But San Francisco was. Uh, it, it, San Francisco is actually the big story. One of the big, two big stories in comedy. One was Boston, and one was San Francisco. Right. You went to Boston or San Francisco to learn to be a comedian. Yeah. You you could get a lot of stage time. And then you. And went, then you went to either L.A. or New York once you were proficient. Yes. And once you once you knew how to handle a crowd, once you would also establish yourself somewhere. Right. So once, could, once I was a finalist in the comedy competition, I moved to L.A. Yeah. Was that? I, the, didn't, I, I didn't win it, but I was a finalist, and I wasn't going to do it that, again. That was the year that Warren Thomas won it, right? No, this huh? is 1985. Sinbad won it. Oh, Sinbad. Oh God. What and are, Ellen DeGeneres came in second. <laughs> You know, what happened was, I never, they always wanted me to be a judge at the comedy competition. Right. And I always said no. And I said no because I said, I know these people, my prejudices are kind of like with people I know, you know, right, people sure. I like, you know. You could get up at the comedy competition, do a set and bomb, and I would give you two, you know, ones or right, you know, tens right. or whatever was the top score just because I like you and I know what you're capable of. Right. Okay, that's the other part. I know what you're capable of. So, um, uh, I uh, just, uh, uh, so I just didn't want to do it. So one year, they just begged me to do it. All right? Okay. And uh, finally, they wore me down. And I said, okay, I'll do it. Right. So I went to the comedy competition. It was the finals. But there are two nights of finals. And then what they do is they do a, a, an average of the two nights. Okay. Right. When I did it, they did three nights. Yeah. This was, I think this was two nights and they did an average of the two nights. But it might have been three nights and they did the average of the three nights. But anyway, I go to the uh, comedy competition. I bring my girlfriend at the time and my friend Richard Sheckman, Shecky, who was from right. the Letterman show, to sit on the other side of me. And I said, right. now look, I'm going to sit here giving these people scores. If you think I'm wrong, tell me. Tell me. You know, because I don't want to, excuse me, I have to blow my nose. Does anybody mind if I blow my nose? Nah. There we go. Ah. Hmm. 
Feel better? No. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so they're on either side of me, and they're checking everything that I'm writing. Okay. Right. And they're going, nah, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. You know, I'm trying to be really honest. Who? But who's on the show? I think Pearl was there. I think that year. I think. No, Pearl was a finalist when I was a finalist. Okay. So who was? I'm trying to remember who the people were. There, but there were. Do uh, uh, you remember who won? Well, I'm going to tell you in a second. Okay. So, um, it's it's the final night, I think, and and so I vote for who I think is the best. Warren Thomas is on the show. Right. And I he did a really great set, so I gave him top scores, and then I looked to check in. I said, "Is that okay?" Girlfriend, is that okay? I said, "Yeah, right." You know, that's right. fair. That's very fair. And then, um, uh, you know, they, they had a whole bunch of other acts. Uh, that some people I really knew and liked. I'm trying to remember who, who was there that year. Right. Uh, and uh, when it was all over, I passed in my score. And they declared, uh, uh, maybe it was the second night, maybe I was doing, doing the first night, but it, finally at the end, they declared Warren Thomas the winner of the comedy competition. Right. And people felt he shouldn't win because I'm, I'm trying to remember who the other guy was he was up against, who got, you know, people, he was he was an audience favorite, not Warren. Right. But what they did is because they took an average of the two nights, this guy came in first on one night, and right. third on the second night. Right. And Warren came in second both nights. So he won. Right. So he won. Right. All of a sudden, Alex Bennett fixed the comedy competition. All by yourself. Yeah, it's in the newspapers. It's everywhere. It's Alex Bennett fixed the comedy competition because You're the he, Chicago he, Black Sox. He, he voted for his he voted for his pal Warren Thomas. You know, and I'm going, Jesus, this is why I didn't want to do it. Right, 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 exactly. You, it's a no-win situation for you if you do it. Yeah, I wish I knew who the other people were on that that show that uh, because they oh, oh I think uh, um, uh, uh, what's his name um, uh, oh god Rob Schneider was there oh really he, he was on the on the bill I'm trying to remember who else was on it uh, but the year I was a finalist uh, Warren was a semi-finalist and I beat him out oh really yeah and then the next year I think he he, he was sick with blood clots I know there was one year he sat out, I believe. Yeah, but he did win the comedy competition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And he, he deserved to win it every time he entered it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, anyway, so, you know, it was, it, was, uh, it was a no win for me. It was just horrible. Right, 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 right. It, it just puts you in a bad situation. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and on top of that, I never liked the comedy competition because I, never, I felt the real comedy competition was you play clubs, people want you, you make more money. That's the right. comedy competition. That's right. Okay. You don't that's turn right. it into a game show. Right. And I felt it was demeaning to the comics. I felt, you know, and actually those comics that won for the most part, you know, never went on to bigger stuff. I mean, Jim Samuels. Right. Big winner of the comedy competition. Anybody ever hear of Jim Samuels? Well, you didn't because he died of AIDS, but. Uh, nice guy. Nice guy. Great guy. Um, Actually, I, I had a problem with And him. Robin came in second. Robin Williams came in second. And we can't even remember who the winner was. Jim somebody or another? I don't know. I'm trying to remember now. But he, but he, but he didn't win the comedy competition. Uh, so, you know, what, what does it prove? It doesn't prove anything. No. You know? And it's not a, it's not a stepladder to success either. No. It, it was at one point. Yeah. It was at one point in the early 80s. By the time it got to my year, it was not. Yeah. And are they still doing it? I wonder. I don't know. I was I was a, a judge one year for the finals. Lucky enough, I didn't know any of the comics. Oh, good. Good. You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't know them from... I wouldn't have known them if they were walking down the street. I did a semifinal. We're running out of time here, but I did a semifinal. One uh, one year, and there was uh, there was a guy who was a uh, 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 rode a unicycle and juggled and told jokes. Oh, I'm trying to remember uh, well, Olivier. Wait. 
Fr uh, uh, Olivia. Frank. Huh? Frank. Frank Olivier. Frank Olivier. And I gave him a zero. Right. And the and the audience loved him. They were applauding. They were going crazy, right? Sure, because it's vaudeville. This is vaudeville. And they said, well, why did you give him a zero? And I said, because this is the comedy competition, and I didn't see any comedy. Right. Right, right. You know, if it was a juggling competition, he'd win. Right. You know, I said I'm I'm basing my judgment on his comedic abilities, not on whether he can juggle and get on a unicycle, which I could never do without killing myself. So. Right. Me neither. Yeah. And hey. it's a little too late to learn the unicycle now. Yeah. Yeah. But if we do, I can probably do ten things you didn't know about unicycles. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Steve. That's Steve Kravitz. Thank you so much, Steve. Love having you Thank here. Thank you as always. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh yes. Hi. Hello, everybody. How are you? Got one person waiting to come on tonight. Mm. Uh, one of these nights, I'm just going to say, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Uh, well, look, oh, look, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. I'm trying to, but I, I'll go to him in a minute, you know. But it'll it'll seem like I'm doing one of my interviews, like, with uh, with Kravitz. Boy, Kravitz is so much fun. I think I'm going to come up with an idea for a show for he and I together, I think. I like him. Anyway, uh, not feeling as, uh, uh, my eyes aren't as, uh, they're still puffy, but they don't hurt as much as they did last night from the uh, from the allergies. So I'm feeling a little better. And then I, I went to my neuropathy today, my neurop neurologist, and uh, he pronounced me still capable of walking for another year. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But anyway, I uh, uh, will, um, uh, let's just uh, admit the two people that are waiting here and, uh, you know, see them. Uh, here they come. Here they come. There they, there's, there's uh, Brian, and uh, uh, Charlie Wallace should be joining us any moment now. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Okay. Well, oh, at least, I, oh, here we here comes um, Jeff Stein. I hear that uh, Alan isn't going to be here tonight, so. My prediction, oh. it was just the four of us after COVID. <laughs> just the, right. I kept saying it's going to be Charlie and I when you and Jeff Jeff can be included after COVID. Yeah, we said after after uh, COVID or after uh, Biden got in office. I see. Uh, it'll just be a few of us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, there's been a, 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 a lessening of the audience, and um, I think some of that has to do with the fact that the wrong guy won. At least so far as this show is concerned. Yeah. Hey, Lark Larkin's doing the whole, you know, the guys who have the full beard and then they do the goatee and then they do the, you know, the little mustache the next day and they keep shaving a little bit more and more off. I got to go to the dentist, so I got to shave it off. <laughs> really? Why? Really? Why? I don't want to go to the dentist and have them crawling through my beard. Oh, well, that's their problem, not yours. It's gross. Hey, Alex, <laughs> yeah. it was Warren Thomas and, because uh, I found it on the internet, uh, Warren Thomas won that year, and uh, you know who came in second? Who? Rick Reynolds. Rick Reynolds, that was wow, it. Rick yeah. Reynolds. yeah. Rick yeah. Reynolds, and it was uh, Rob Becker, yeah. Tom Kenny, and Rob Schneider. Yeah, Tom Kenny, where, where'd he ever go? Whatever happened to Tom Kenny? <laughs> Whatever happened to him? <laughs> See, you know something? It's funny. To people who are listening to this program, they probably went, oh, I've heard of Rob Schneider. You know? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, it, you know, but the fact of the matter is, who's the most successful out of that group? Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. And people yeah. are going, who the hell's Tom Kenny? Let me just say three words. SpongeBob, well, maybe it's four words. I don't know. SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. He's, he's the voice of SpongeBob. Yep. Has been for, what, 20 years? Something like that? Jeez, at least. Uh, yeah. I would love to. I, he, he, he has his health insurance going over at SAG after, okay? 
God, he must get residuals too, right? Just like like a cash register, right? Well, he I'm sure. And I'm sure if they have like toys and stuff and it's got oh his voice God. coming, you pull the string and the voice comes out, I'm sure he gets money for that too. Oh, my God. Jeez, that's unbelievable. Either that or he... Uh, um, if, if he doesn't get money for that, he got bought out for like one price yeah. know, for that. But I don't think he did that. I bet, I bet he gets paid every time they pull the string. Yeah. Hi, Tony. How are you? Who's got my wallpaper? I was laughing last night. What? <laughs> I was laughing at the wallpaper. Oh, really? Hold on a second. I, you see, <laughs> I have a hard time doing it because when I do it, people are going to see that I'm going through the process of... Um, of doing it, so maybe I shouldn't. I shouldn't even consider it. Uh, yeah, mine looks terrible. I think. What yours looks terrible? Well, mine mine looks here. You see all that stuff? It says video settings. Let me move that out of the way. Yours okay. looked good though. Really, it looked like he was in my mother's kit, uh, dining room. What? He looked like he was in the dining room. I want my <laughs> plate back. I was going to tell him. <laughs> really? Wait a minute. I I um, gee, I added it here. Where is it? Well, oh, here we go. Here we go. There we go. All right. Great. Yeah. And Charlie, you have one, don't you? It doesn't work very well. It doesn't work very well. Oh. Charlie, does, the play, does, the play, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie does the, the <laughs> Dot Candy 1941. And, it, you know, the thing is, that there, if there were more light on the background of you, yeah. everybody could see it. If you move out of the way, just move out of the camera range. See? There it is, folks. That's it. That's the... Uh, let me see, so we what all. Are you gonna do? I'm gonna. I don't know what we're go. gonna do. We may have to redecorate. Again. <laughs> You're gonna have to redecorate. You better redecorate. I'm afraid if I take it, if we take it down. Yeah. You don't think she'll come back and like. You know, uh, do you, uh, I don't think she. You know, I I would like to think that there's not much of a chance of that. Okay. I hope so. You know, I mean, she's going to, you think she's actually going to come back, haunt the house to, to make no, sure. No, you know, well, the other night, I don't want to get off top, but the other night, I, I usually don't remember my dreams, but I actually dreamed that we were like in Florida. It must have been like, a, you know, when you like remember like a vacation. Well, to begin with, you dreamt. You didn't dream. I dreamt, yeah. yeah. And we were in, in the hotel, we were like eating. Who? And, like a, and then I woke up. But I saw my, so I was, I must have been thinking of them. And then I woke up, I was like, oh, wait, I wait, wait, who, 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 remember like part of the dream. Who were you was, eating with? Then the, I went who, to the bathroom. Who were you eating with at the hotel? Well, it was my dad. We would go and my mother were getting, uh, we were eating like in the Polynesian, one of those hotels where you have like a, all you can eat. And I remember my mother saying, go get more to eat. Because, you know, I, we didn't want to probably stop for lunch during the day. Yeah. I was small though. And I got up, I remember us eating and then I kind of woke up. And then my brother's, I what told do you mean you kind of woke up? You either wake up or you don't wake up. I woke up. And if you don't that, wake up, then you're then. The you're, you know when you wake up out of your dream? Well, like, if you don't wake up, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So I probably, yeah. It's it all right. I don't know why I was thinking of Florida, though. Boy, you just wind Tony up, and he just yeah, you do, yeah. And, and you know, you don't want to get uh, 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 Facebook messages from him. You really no, I go into a tangent. You go into a tangent. You don't know right. how you don't know how to write one thing. I know. And make it if you want to make it long, you make it long. But no, you right. you write a little bit, and then you write another write one, and you write another one. Closer. And every time that happens, my watch goes off. I, yeah, I do that to my brother too. He's yeah, like, but, would you just make one message? Yeah, yeah well, because I go crazy when I start. Yeah. I, you know, if you don't want to find yourself day. in a state where you don't wake up some morning, I'd stop oh, it. Yeah. You know, yeah. You don't hear it then. Yeah, but anyway, we were talking yeah. about John Larkin, who's got a major problem. He's going to what the de he's, well, he's going to the dentist. What oh, to get your teeth yeah. cleaned or what? I just I got a cavity. Do you have a cavity? Yeah. That, you know, when they say, I have a cavity, and people go, I have a cavity in my mouth. That's redundant. Yep. Right? Do you have insurance? Because your mouth is a cavity, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, very good. You That's know? Good. So when they say, oh, you have a cavity, I say, yeah, but what's going on in there, in it? You know? But and I went to my dentist yesterday, and I got my teeth clean, and she, she has... You know something? They they first of all used to have the spit sink. Spit, okay, fine, right? Then they got the uh, the little thing that hangs on your on your on your uh, on your lip, and it sucks out the water. Now she's oh, got yeah. this thing that goes in here. Have you seen anybody gotten these? And it's like a disc. 
And I don't I know what the that. hell it does. I got the suction thing. I get nervous. But I got su- I got stereo suction going on. <laughs> and what happened on this one is I don't know her the suction on the hose was uh, on on uh, on some kind of massive uh, uh, super suction because I have a big sore now in my mouth from that thing just sucking at it sucking at it sucking at it and you know yeah you know, I used to, I remember the days when I used to be able to get gas for anything you remember those days good old days oh God I used to go in to a dentist. And he had a woman clean my teeth. I had, I took gas for getting my teeth clean. And the reason I did, they didn't charge you for it in those days. And it was just, you know, as my doctor put it, want to get high, you know? And, and so I just sit there out in La La Land. And, but then they stopped giving gas. I, as one doctor said, I don't give it because it's not good for you. Oh, really? Well, all this drilling is not good for me either. Okay. You tell them about all the cocaine that's going up your nose. Yeah. That wasn't good for you either. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, come on. I did cocaine. I did a lot of drugs in my time. A little gas ain't going to kill me. All right. <laughs> Kills only the weak, the weak cells, right? Yeah. The weak brain cells. Yeah, yeah. Rob, Rob Snyder's brother used to own DNA Lounge up in San Francisco, big club. Yeah. And my friend used to DJ there, so my friend just before COVID, who's a DJ up here, mm-hmm. he moved he moved uh, with Rob Snyder's because Rob Snyder's brother lives in LA now, so he moved down there uh, mm-hmm. to do big producing down there, and then all of a sudden COVID hit. So but he lives with uh, Rob Snyder's brother down there. Yeah, in LA. The, Rob Snyder's brother and Rob Schneider do not get along. Oh really? Oh, it's horrible. It's so horrible. I shouldn't bring you him up. No, I know, and I feel bad about it because I like both of them. Uh-huh. You know, I know a lot of people who like both of them, and 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 you know, when something like that happens, you almost have to take a side. Mm. You know, it's like it, 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 you haven't been married before, right? It, it brought, uh, Me? It, yeah. Yeah, I was married before. Oh, divorce. you were. Okay. Yeah. So, so you know what happens when you get divorced, and mm-hmm. you split up the friends, right? Yeah. 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 So that's what happens with uh, with like brothers who break up and things like that, you know. Well, you better take a side. I can't stand it if you go see that guy. You know, you can't be friends with everybody, both of them. So. <coughs> oh, at 12 a.m. is going to be a thunderstorm here. Oh, so I got to get the show over with on time so I can run in and close all the windows. Yeah. Because we live up because we live up so high. Um, uh, if the windows are open, the rain comes in the windows oh. and then floods out the living room or whatever. Well, there she is, ladies and gentlemen, lovely and attractive Kathleen Halstead. Hello, Kathleen. Thank you. You said the other day, you were writing me that people were trolling you on uh, Facebook. Oh, no, just a, I don't know, just a, some folks that wanted to be friends oh, that yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, why? That are your friends. Well, sometimes they, they are not people who want to be friends. Thank you. Okay. No, what they are, what they are, if you, in case you didn't know, they're people who they see that you don't have enough friends, so they figure they can become a friend, and then they can start sending you stuff. And With me, if I go down under 5,000, which is the limit, okay, Every time I go under 5,000, I get a friend request from like five or six hookers, you know, who when you go to their site, you know, have very provocative shots and you're going, yeah, you want to be my friend, right? Yeah. How much do you want to be my friend? Yeah. Well, <laughs> these these folks have made it clear that, you know, oh, I saw you on Alex's show. Oh, blah, really? Blah, 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 oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. The, yeah. But yeah. I don't know them, so. I'm not going to reciprocate. Might be your 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 next husband, next stalker, <laughs> or your next Thank stalker. You. Yeah, yeah, right. next stalker. Yeah. They're, they're using us. They're using us to get to you, Alex. Yeah, really. I, ne- I never go on Facebook ever. I don't trust it, except I have a fake account on a fake name that sometimes I go on. Doesn't have any friends though. <laughs> well, that's because that's because you, you get. What, huh? what were you going to say? I said, do you use a fake name, John? Yeah, wow. yeah. Fred Smirks. Go to Fred Smirks. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And and, and uh, do you get trolled in that with that name? Uh, no. Some some <laughs> somehow a lot of people that are on my other you know my my normal Facebook account yeah some, somehow they find me and they go hey how come you change your name whatever well how comes i wonder if some of these hookers are trying to try uh, trying to be befriend me let me see friend request do they're I robots to... oh here they we go yeah yeah, yeah look wait a minute folks <laughs> they're I mean, robots. I mean, they're not they're, real people they're, well I'm, I'm sure they're not real people but but uh there's uh there's my page wait a minute oh oh wait a minute wait, where is it where is it where is it come here come here really oh you have um, been deleted I, I have a problem. I have a problem. I can uh, have to go here uh, down to computer, and then I have to see here where where wh where would I where would I get it? Oh, there we go. Okay, all right, all right. Now you can see it. Now you see. Look at this, folks. Let's see. Confirm or delete. This is Hannah Cobb. Okay. Should I confirm or delete Hannah? Look How many that. friends does she have with huh? you? Huh? Any mutual friends? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, but uh -huh. but she's yeah. she's almost touching her vajayjay. Ooh. And she has large breasts of which we're seeing the cleavage. And of course we see her iPhone. She has a cheap iPhone. Oh wow! Yeah, a uh, friend, friend, friend. Yeah, friend. Uh, there you go. Oh yeah. I, I wish I could show this all to you uh, out there. Uh, the audience is seeing them. There we go. So, there we go. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there we go. That's her. Okay. You can you can hold him up every time I, I show somebody here. Okay. Okay. It'll. Change. I say friend her. At least you say, you say friend her. <laughs> At least check out her pictures, and then you can delete her. <laughs> you know. Great pictures. It's a, it's a, it's a magnificent picture. Those are well, well. We'll delete her. What kind of homosexual am I? Here's one. Uh, this is uh, this is in Russian, I think. Oh, delete. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. That's Nyan Khan Y. What is what is that all about? Oh uh, well, that, well. Well, I got one from someone named Hawk is Long. Mike Hawk is Long. Should I delete? Or <laughs> <Hawk> is <long? laughs> Wait a minute. Here is that Larkin. Here's A G A O. It, 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 yeah, I, I'll delete her. Let me see. Uh, Mar Jolef, uh, Jolef Empress. They're all girls, huh? They are. Oh, the, yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah, like girls. Girls. a whole yeah. list of them. Well, occasionally there's a guy, you know. Uh, here's uh, Velof Anya Octavia. Uh, she she's kind of you know she's cute, you know, but. I don't know why she's trolling me like this. Here's Amber Malaysia. Not her real name, I'm sure. Right? <laughs> there we go. These are people, folks, if, if I just don't go through them every now and then and delete them. I mean, uh, they do They do all have, uh, what do you call it, sites. This is Finda Sumliat. I don't know. I don't think she's a hooker. I just think she's probably trying to sell me insurance. Um, there, there's another scam that's going on. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You ready for this one? This is one you'll have to hold up in a moment. This is, oh, yeah. Okay, this is Habib Musyafa. Oh, my God. Uh, join other naughty swingers and get involved in a lifestyle with oh, one of the best up. online communities. And do you, has the picture come up yet on your thing there so you can show it to them? What am I doing wrong? I don't get those. Well, some these these are on uh, if you're watching YouTube. These are going out on YouTube. There we go. There oh, she is. Look at that. Uh, huge. Yeah, it's hard to focus. It's hard to focus, but those two big round things underneath her face are not <laughs> basketballs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh man. Hey, there are just look at them. Look at them. Look, uh, I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to delete this one. Uh, uh, Laura Jackson, I don't know. What does she look like here? This is Laura Jackson. Oh, God. That's a little gruesome, folks. Uh, here uh -oh. comes Ray Renati. Let me add him to the group. 
Uh, but uh, here, let me just delete a few more here. Let me delete a few more here, a few more. Uh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Maybe I don't want to, oh, I, I think I just did, I, I negated somebody who I shouldn't have, but anyway. Uh, it, it, I'll, I'll go back to them later, but we, we there, there's another There's another scam that's going on, probably going on for a long time, but um, these Asian girls, get your friend, but they want to they want to get you on WhatsApp right away. So they get you on WhatsApp and then they friends with you for a few days or whatever. And they start saying that they've been investing money Then they make you download an app. And the app is I guess it's OK, but but then they try to have you invest money and all this stuff. And so funny. Yeah. I don't know how these guys fall for that. But yeah, yeah. Well. So you see, I mean, look. I lost, I lost a couple thousand, but other than that, <laughs> you, really? you see, you see no, no, I'm just kidding. I, I heard about this, and then there was one girl trying to do that, and I just roped her like well, I, you know, I don't understand why over at Facebook they don't do something about this. Yeah. You know, I'm, because I'm, they're I, too big for themselves. I sit here right? wasting my time you know deleting big breasts and feeling guilty about it like i've suddenly turned gay or something you know not that there's anything wrong with that <laughs> <laughs> well they got two billion accounts they can't keep track of everybody who the gay guys no oh, yeah oh, them oh, and oh. facebook <laughs> billion wow That's crazy. a billion really yeah over a billion yeah Jeez. I don't even a know bazillion. why. I don't know even why I keep my account anymore. I don't even get any real viewers off my stuff. The only thing I use it for now is, is okay. doing a lot of little live shows from uh, the park, mm -hmm. you know, which I did today. And I just learned <laughs> how to with my with my new GoPro how to actually use that on live go live on Facebook. So yeah, you know. How are the allergies? The allergy today is better. My eyes are a little burning, but not much. In other words, my eyes don't feel like raw meat today. Yeah. You know, but yesterday they were just, they were disgusting. And, uh, you know, so. And I went, I went to see my neurologist today. He, he, would, he was really made me happy. Uh, I, I, I told him, he said, how you been feeling? And I said, well, I'm tired all the time, you know? I said, I'm, I'm, I feel fatigued all the time. He says, I do too. Now what else is bothering you? <laughs> 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 you know, he said it's, it's a, the, a whole year of being kind of limited in your abilities uh, because of COVID. You know what I thought about was all the um, the the women and guys as well who over the last year uh, would have just lowered their standards for somebody who had antibodies <laughs> you know I mean I was thinking of starting a, um, um, a what do you male escort service of guys who had already gotten COVID and and just saying hey you know here's some safe guys imagine yeah but they can't get it up anymore you're right you're right <laughs> You're right. I didn't stop to think about that part of it. Uh, but, uh, uh, I just, well, you know, I thought that would be a good business. If uh, you get COVID, you can't get it. Out out well, the other, the other business I want to start once was for people who were afraid to fly. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you afraid of flying, Tony? No, I get a little nervous, but I'm okay once it's up in the air. Okay, like but here is the thing. Oh, you, yeah. you get somebody and they're just deadly fearful of flying. Okay. So I would hire people to fly with them who had already been in a plane crash. Oh, <laughs> good God. What are the odds? What are the odds? Right? The world according and to Garth. that would be the name of your company. What are the odds? What are the odds? <laughs> yeah. Remember uh, the world according to Garp? Yeah. Remember the Robin Williams movie? Yeah. He was looking to buy the house and the plane crashed in it and he said, I'll buy it. What's yeah. the likelihood of that ever happening again? Exactly. Exactly. And you know Glenn Glenn Close played his mother in that movie? Yes, she did. She was only two years older than him. Oh yeah, well you, uh, look, you wanna you wanna hear uh, really you know, if you wanna be a woman who think of being a woman who 
had low self-esteem. Uh, do you remember North by Northwest? Yep. Cary yeah. Grant, mm -hmm. you know, he gets chased yeah, all around the United States. Yeah. His mother was played by a woman by the name of Jesse Royce Landis, who played Cary Grant's mother in that picture. She was two years younger than he was. <laughs> I mean, imagine them saying, uh, oh, we have a good, uh, Hitchcock saying, I have a good part for you. You can be Cary Grant's mother. But I'm two years younger than him. Yeah, but you look like you could be his mother. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Nice. Well, that was the same with Glenn Close and Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, you know what bugs me is when, you like, I was watching um, an, an actor. He was a, he's pretty famous. He was in that movie, um, uh, oh shit! No, oh, the movie. Oh shit! I remember that. I can't remember the, the name. Movie. It starred what's his name? Man. The person, uh, the, the, the person, Silver Linings. The person yeah. who was in that thing. Silver Linings Playbook. Yeah, Bradley Silver Cooper. Linings Playbook. I heard he. I don't know the guy's name. Bradley he, Cooper. Yeah, yeah, he can't be older than thirty or thirty-five. Maybe is the oldest. And he goes, he, he was going, man. I really, you know, growing up, I just loved watching that show, uh, King of. Um, show of shows with, um, you know, Sid, Sid, Sid Caesar. Yeah, yeah. Sid Caesar. Yeah. No, just say that. Just, always just say that guy who was in that thing. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so the show of shows with Sid Caesar, and I'm going, you're fucking 35, man. <laughs> that show was way over before you were even born. But yeah, but but people do have access to it. Yeah, but he was going, oh, I remember when I was a kid, watching that when I was a kid, like it was on when he was alive. Well, I remember watching it when I was a kid. Yeah, but he's, yeah. you know... My parents pretty, loved that show. Yeah, it was a great show, but, you know... Yeah. Or, 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 like, they'll have some black person talking about the civil rights movement, and they weren't even born then, and they're, they're like, talking like they were there. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it annoys me. It just annoys me. I noticed that uh, Ray's now put up the uh, the background there, but that isn't <laughs> the one with his mother in it. Well, I didn't, I'm trying to be more sensitive. And no, it's all right. <laughs> Wait, go ahead. Do you have it? Wait a minute. Yeah, I have it. Yeah. We, it just okay. lost Ray. You want the one with the mom in there? Yeah, the I, one with I the thought mom Phil's was good last night. Phil's was funny last night. Like, she was laughing. Then <laughs> when it went up, I was watching it. Just, this son of a bitch got my mother's wallpaper. There we go. I was watching the <laughs> there we go. Just move to your side a little bit so everybody can see mom. Other way. <laughs> Other way. There we go. I'm going to have to hang a different picture. You know what I'm going to do, Alex? I'm going to hang a different picture from a bedroom over here. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking about doing that tonight, but I gotta figure which one to take out of the thing, just to throw Phil for a loop. So you know, that's, I'm gonna change that. That's, got, she's got so that, much stuff laying around. I'm gonna change it up. That's Phil take her background so Phil's won't match up to mine. That's the mother from Psycho, one? right? That's the mother from yeah. Psycho. This is it. Yeah, this is, I made this a long time ago. Alex, yeah. remember when you said last year you got a job until she goes, and then bang, Trump got it. Well, I mean, you're out of work now. You know, it's back you know, to selling those. I listen, but I'm sleeping like a baby at night, though. Are you really? It's so, I listen to the radio at night. It's a, you know what it is? She used to call me all night, and now, nothing. I should call you in the middle of the night and go, Tony, I'm Tony, I'm can you come over here, Tony? <laughs> yeah, I'm up. <laughs> I pick this up the phone. The and goes, yeah, I'm watching a movie. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. But this no. is the birds in Psycho. Yeah, the birds in oh Psycho. God. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Wait until Phil calls. I'm going to change it. I'm gonna, I should put a picture of Phil behind you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. On that, but because with last night I had the game on mute. Well, what is that? What is that round night. thing back there, though? I always see it in these yeah. pictures. What that, is that? It, no, plate. over, over, over. The, the round thing. It's just round. It's a dish. Is it a dish? It's oh yeah. The the dish I showed you. That's she chipped when she took it down. He oh. has another one. I don't know if you can see this. Oh boy, Small. we're getting a tour of Tony's home. Oh. This yes. is. This is scary. This is like going. This is like going through the it. psycho house. Okay. Yeah. Alex, she got so many plates. That what, what's this plate? Worry. What's this plate? Show us oh. that plate, Tony. Show us the plate. See the plate. We couldn't see it. That is the most disgusting piece of art I've ever seen in my life. Didn't she think when she thought she had radar? Yeah, yeah, but she no one, someone on, on eBay. It was obvious she that she got out of garage sale. It was obvious. Someone on oh, eBay would yeah. buy it. It's, yeah. it's obvious uh -huh. she didn't buy that at the Met. You know, oh man. And, and Tony, she doesn't have it anymore. You do. No, I can't throw it. If I ever move, I'm gonna have to keep this. Did you? Uh, did you? Oh uh, did, it, when she I'm gonna use it, when, but I don't have the heart to throw. Can I ask you some kind of questions? Uh, 
when she died, uh, did she leave you any money? Actually, she did. She gave me, my brother told me she left me something extra because he never told me because she left it as a secret. She was, she's like, just in case something happened, because she was getting old. So she left me like a little fund of like, I had a little bit 20,000. She left me. Oh, that's nice. That was nice. And my brother asked surprise me. He said, mom left you something. He said, oh, God, what? He says, so it was like some money in the bank that she wanted me to have. I said, oh, that was nice of her. By the way, you know what? You know what I just did today. By the way, yeah, it, it, this is this is this is a moment of passage. It's almost oh, like oh, we got the house too, Alex. I forgot to tell you. Right, that. right. Well, that's worth something. Yeah, that's worth at least fifty thousand. Uh, no, what I did today, yeah. I sold all my Sirius XM stock. You got rid of it? Yeah. What was it trading at? It was doing okay. It was trading at oh. shit. Okay. Here's what, no, here's what happened. Here's what happened. It. it goes up. It goes down. It goes up, yeah. it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. So I, it was like in one of those periods where it was just going back and forth, three or four dollars, down three or four dollars. And I just said, I'm tired of it, and I'm tired of even being associated with Sirius XM mm -hmm. on any level. So we called them, and I was able to roll over my 401k into a rollover IRA, and now my business manager is going to invest it in things that will make me some money. What are you doing? Are you trying to... I was going to go... They were selling green shirts down the street. I was going to get a green shirt and just have Alex Bennett's head <clears throat> one night. You know? <laughs> My air was trading at six dollars today, Alex. What? It was trading at six oh one. It closed at yeah. It was the six oh one. Have you seen what they were like a year ago at seven something? No, that's yeah, to yeah. No, it's it's it's. It, it, I said to my business manager, I said it's just sitting there, you know, making some money, losing some money. The days of it making me money have pretty yeah. well disappeared. Okay. Yeah, if you did this last year, buy Bitcoin. Oh yeah, Bitcoin. Blow oh my, my Bitcoin tripled the and then it crashed, so I sold it so that I didn't lose everything. <laughs> well, now's ah, the time to buy it. It's down. This what? Now's the time to buy it when it's down. Yeah, I sold it just to wait a little you bit. You know when the time buy. is to buy Bitcoin? Never. Never. Ever. <laughs> Get these kids don't buy it. It's very risky. Never, I ever. I made 50%. Do you understand dollars. Bitcoin, Brian? No. Okay. I do. Did anybody well, here understand weird. Bitcoin? I don't know. Oh, you have to. I do. Uh, you I understand what's the difference between Bitcoin and money? It's money you can hold. spend. Yeah. Bitcoin you yeah. can't. It's <laughs> yeah. Money I can hold. I can hold money. Well, well, what have, okay, let me ask you this. Okay, so I'm wanting, I, I suddenly, I, if, if I want $100, I go down to the bank and I take it out of the ATM. What if I want $100 that I've got in Bitcoin? How do I get that? They got Bitcoin machines now. You can do you you can do that. You can go to uh, just downstairs. There's a there's a store, a grocery store. It's got a Bitcoin machine. Oh, I can really? go down there with my Bitcoin wallet and take Bitcoin out of there and get cash for it anytime I want. Dollar. In my Bitcoin pants. <laughs> what? In my Bitcoin shoes. Yeah. <laughs> In Bitcoin wallet. What's a Bitcoin look like? What? There's so gotta, you go there's... down. You go down to the Bitcoinery and get your Bitcoins? <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. There's a machine the thing right, is, down, right downstairs. Well, there's a machine. He's, the very, thing about money, he, he's very much into bitcoin -ness. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about money now is it's all numbers. <clears throat> you know, you don't see any money now. You, money, you know, you get paid and these numbers that uh, go into your bank account. There's numbers that go out for your car, numbers that go out for your mortgage and all that stuff. It's just a bunch of numbers now. I just yeah, find right. that, uh, you know, I always take... Ooh, like, look at Charlie. There you go. I, I always take two hundred. I take three hundred dollars out of the bank every month, okay, and I've always put two hundred dollars off to the side and taken a hundred to be, be in my pocket. By the end of the month, I've still almost yeah. got most of that hundred I put in my pocket, because I mean they're using a credit card or you know it's being I'm being paid off in a certain way in one way or another that has nothing to do with actual cash transactions. Everybody right. uses charge card now and debit cards. I, I, I still use money in the supermarket. You pay cash for everything. I well, the thing is, I got yeah. this cash. I got like about about five grand here. I've gotten money out of the bank. Three I had one times oh, in the last year. Yeah, but I mean, I I've kind of like squirreled away cash. 
But, you know, I then go down to something like the Apple Store and I say, I want to get myself a new iPad or something. So I'll use that because it's my stash, right? And I go down there and I take out the money and they're, they're looking at it under a oh, microscope to make sure I'm not trying to lie. I, <laughs> I went into Best Buy once when I left California. Remember, I sold my car and the guy paid me Ooh. off in cash. Yeah. So I had the yep. cash from that. So I wanted to buy a TV set here in New York. So I went down to Best Buy and they said, how are you going to pay for this? And I said, cash. And they, they, all of a sudden, a blank mm -hmm. stare went over their face. Like, they didn't understand how you handled cash. So they had to go get their manager to find out, what do we do about cash? We got a guy with cash over here in the corner. Come on down. Yeah. And, and they said, well, we'll, we'll take yeah, it, but it's, do. you got it legally, didn't you? Oh, no, I rolled some phone. bum no, on the corner for it. I'm a drug dealer on the side. You know, cash is suspicious now. You're, yeah, you're, right. you're probably a dealer. drug dealer. Yes, uh, uh, John Larkin. Back in the 90s, when I had a bunch of money, I, I was uh, I was bidding on houses at uh, at the courthouse, mm -hmm. you know, trustee mm -hmm. sales. Mm -hmm. And um, to bid, you'd have to prove that you had the money, so you'd show up with cashier's checks, you know. Wow. And you'd have, like I, I'd go to the bank in the morning and get like, you know, two three hundred thousand dollars in like cashier's checks, oh, but really? I'd want them in like fifty thousand each, you know. And the bank would go, well, what are you doing? And I go, I'm bidding on houses. And I don't, if I don't, if, you know, if I, if I buy the house for, let's say a hundred thousand and all I got is a $200,000 cashier's check, I got to give them the whole thing and wait for them a couple weeks to refund me the difference. You know? Oh, okay. Well, I made, that made sense. Yeah. yeah but, but it was crazy, man, walking around like, and then if I didn't buy, I would have to take it back to, you know, put it back in the bank. You know, sometimes I'd be carrying like five hundred thousand dollars for like a week in cash yeah. check. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Wow. And, and you know you know what happened? What? Like a lot a lot of times, you know, all the people that were bidding on them, mm -hmm. we all knew each other mm -hmm. and, and these guys were cheats. What they would do is they would bid really low and then they'd go across the street and then have their own little bid mm -hmm. and then split the difference, you know? And they all well. got busted. I'll I tell you, Bitcoin. I'll tell you, we got a guy here going to be helpful. Uh, Jeff, explain Bitcoin to everybody. I <laughs> have never used it. I've never spent any money on it. And everything, from what I understand, it's a crazy, crazy it, Well, it's thing. supposed to be, if, if it were more secure than cash, if it were more secure than, than, than the currency, I say fine. But every day you hear about it crashing and it's people losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in Bitcoin. And I'm going, how secure is that? You know. It's just volatile, yeah. It's, it's really volatile. It didn't, um, didn't, didn't Elon just like try to pump the, the Deutsche coin or whatever? Well, no, it, and I lie all night and then it went down and crashed. Yeah. What was it? It was called, I can't remember. It's called something. It's with a D. Dub coin. No, it's not Deutsche coin. It's uh, what? What Dumb coin. Dumb coin. Yeah. Doge coin. Do Doge. Do Doge. Do Doge. Do Do Doge. Do it's called Doge coin. Doge, Doge was a meme that's, with his dog. You well, see that thing on Saturday Night Live? Coin. What is Doge yeah. coin? Yeah. <laughs> what is Doge coin? That is yeah. another bullshit. I invested in douche coin. Is that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway. So. Um, oh. hey, did, did you hear? Um, Remember that, that video where the kids bit biting the other kid's finger? You know, it was, and it was a, it went viral on the internet. He's going, Charlie bit my finger. Remember yeah. that video? No, but what, what probably what probably will piss me off is when you tell me they had two million views. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm doing something worthwhile here and I can't get a hundred people. You know, I mean, come on. The father who owned it, well, now the two brothers now they're like probably you know like almost 20 but they just sold it for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> a video that that can be copied off of anywhere i mean that i, that I don't understand hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Are, did they use that 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 new way of certifying that electronic yeah. certification yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. NFT. nfts or something yep yeah i, I kind of I, I still don't understand yeah, it. well you that way you own your own your own creation, electronic creations. It's good yeah, for like but, photographers but, and 
But anybody can make a copy of it and use it. Yeah, but then you know it's a copy, so it's not worth it. Yeah, that. so it's not So worth what, what's happening in the news? I mean, I haven't been able to find anything that's going on in the yeah, news. Mass no, slaughter in San Jose. Yeah, they had a big shooting they right shooting, down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, down, yeah. In, uh, down in San Jose. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. A couple yeah. of my friends worked there, and uh, luckily they didn't work. But one guy who was supposed to work today, he actually took the day what, off. What was, so the what, what, what was the company? It's VTA, the Valley Transit Authority. Really? So it's all the light rail, the light rail trains yeah, well, that it's go. Some guy, it's, it's, it's some guy, it's a disgruntled employee, the usual disgruntled employee, yeah. right? Hey, he yep. torched his, he torch his house first. He torched his, or lit the back on fire and then and then took off to work. And I guess my friend said there were union meetings in the morning. And this yeah. guy's crazy. But he was loaded. He was ready to go. He, here's something I heard. And, and now we, we turn to Charlie because oh. it comes from his state. And Charlie's right over there, if you're looking. Well, even yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, yeah. Texas just passed new, some new gun laws. Oh, yeah. Tell them about the new Texas gun laws. Everybody, hold, hold on to your sphincters. Go ahead. Anybody can have a gun anywhere. You don't have to register it. You don't have to take any classes. It could be concealed or it could be out in the open. <laughs> It's just the wild, wild west in Texas now. Right on. Cool. Take cool. it to church, take it to bars. What cool. What was the inspiration for this? Insanity. You know, I mean, it has been the wild west for years in Texas. You but know. they're like, I couldn't give two squirts of moose shit. We're going to carry our guns. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. Yeah. Only that's Canada, moose He's shit. Guns. Moose yeah. shit. Cow shit. Down when did the country get so in love with was this like, I don't know but I mean they passed this uh, this law in Texas where you don't have to register I mean, you just walk mm -hmm. in you buy the thing you go home oh, and you shoot your best friend yeah, if you want no to. waiting period and no, no, place you know right. and, and what was the thinking on this was there a rationale that they gave it all Charlie because all our exes live in Texas that's why I That's moved in Tennessee. <laughs> no, but what was what was the rationale that the gov the governor must have done this, right? They yep. never gave no any rationale. rationale. It's just That's the great. Republicans. They don't have. To and is it an executive order? I reckon. No, it was passed by the legislature. Oh yeah. God! Abbott <laughs> signed it into law. What? Who? Both houses who, passed. Are, te are Texans such state? idiots that they vote for these people? I reckon. What's ironic is they vote for this law, but you cannot go in the Capitol with a gun. You That's know? the one place in the whole fucking state you cannot have a gun is in the Texas Capitol. Yeah, but you can <laughs> wait. Out, you can wait outside <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, <that's Nope>. true. <laughs> they won't pass the unemployment benefits, but you can carry a gun. Yeah, yep. exactly. Exactly. No, you know, you see these food. Well, if, if you're dead, what do you need the unemployment benefits for? What? What were you What were you saying, Kathleen? I'm sorry, I interrupted. I said, you know, you see like these Teslas and Priuses going down the road in Texas with their gun racks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but have you ever seen yep. how small a Tesla is? Sometimes the gun racks will upend the car, you know, because it's too heavy. Alex, was it was the gun fascination like this in the sixties and seventies? Where there's this much gun talk? Like well, I was wondering when this sprouted up. Oh, in the fifties, a lot of the guns were being manufactured in Connecticut at that time, mm. and a lot of that company like moved. And went out of but the also, place. people weren't. Oh, as, people packing like no, this. People weren't as. Um, irresponsible with the use of guns then. You didn't hear about mass shootings. No. I was going to say, you, you when I was growing up, you never heard about mass shootings. You heard about shootings, but you never heard about mass shootings. Who's that? Who, who's that? Bill, Bill Meyer. Bill. <laughs> oh, shit. Gee, Bill how Bill young Bill. was he? He had hair. That's what he I was think, I think that's not a real him. lion that he's next to. Is it, it, it is a real tiger. lion. He was a real it tiger. tiger. Yeah. Sorry for us, eh? he didn't decide to Alex, smack. Alex, I heard that trip. You were making fun of him when he's packing in the car. All those weapons he's got. Remember you said yesterday? <laughs> if they he's stop him, him, if they stop him, they you get, said he's going to get arrested for crying out loud. I, had a, I was watching the basketball game. I says, I heard what you said. I said, oh, my God, how much does he bring it in the car? <laughs> like, 
In case people didn't listen to last night's show, Phil Meyer is going to a gun. What is it? Uh, a gun thing? Well, you know what, Brian, don't you? He's talking. The gun show? The gun? A it's gun not a gun circus? show. No, it's like a gun. <laughs> it's a place to shoot your gun. Oh. Like oh, why he? Firing range. Yeah, but, yeah, but why he's going to Pahrump, Nevada, <laughs> to shoot on. his guns? All the way to Nevada. Wow. Yeah. He should move to Texas where he can buy as many as he wants without yeah, question. Right. He's in the wrong business, Alex. Uh, do they TV, limit the kind of guns that you can buy, or is this anything like, you know, assault I don't weapons? I don't remember seeing any limit. I mean, you can't you can't buy a, a semi-automatic rifle that way. Oh I mean, when are we just going to say, you know, who needs these guns? I mean, when I, I was growing up, we didn't you. need them. You know, and by the way, there were no laws like there are now against gun ownership, but we were responsible in our use of them. You know, it wasn't, uh, and people weren't crazy about buying tons of guns and things like that. All of a sudden, you know, and do you know, I sound like say, an old man saying this? By the right, way, I would say I was going to ask you something too, Alex. I was watching a documentary on the '60s. I didn't realize. LSD was legal for quite a while until the mid 60s. Then oh, they stopped. Oh, you know? yeah, no, yeah, LSD was. Uh, Can you well, buy L that anyway? LSD was then? invented in the mid 40s, I think, and uh, wasn't illegal until some people decided they were having a nice time doing it. Too much fun. Too much fun. Then they they didn't want anybody to have fun. And they, you know, LSD, of all the drugs that you could possibly be doing, was the most therapeutic drug that you could have and they stopped the use of this very therapeutic drug they're starting to now use psychedelics again uh, for treating certain things like Ronnie my wife my late ex-wife my late ex-wife isn't it what is that I don't understand what I just said but anyway my late ex-wife uh, she before her death took psilocybin oh. to try and cope with death and it did help her it did help her, and it's it, this. Uh, it's being used with a lot of people who are facing, you know, terminal cancer and whatever. Is they're taking psilocybin, and it's giving them a peace that they wouldn't normally have had. Uh, and it's not any kind of like you go to La La Land and then you get stupid and decide that death ain't bad. It's yeah. just that you you get an out of body experience. You get a lot of those things, and and mm -hmm. and it it helped her. It definitely helped her. She came back. She was very at peace with herself for the longest time, but she lived a little too long, and it started. The effects started wearing off. You know, she'd done it closer to the time when she decided to, you know, take the uh, the cocktail, as it were, because she, you know, she committed suicide. Uh, I mean, she, she, illegal suicide, because in Oregon, it's uh, doctor-assisted suicide, or as it's better known in California, Kaiser. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's one of Bubbles best jokes. Uh, Doctor assistant. You know, they just they uh they're on the final stretches of legalizing EMDR for doctors. To What's describe. EMDR? Uh ecstasy. Oh, ecstasy. Well, actually, ecstasy. MDA. MDA. Sorry. MDA. I have asked. I I got it mixed up. Yeah, MDMA. Yeah, I just supposed to be uh and a lot, for a lot of people, it's way more effective than antidepressants just a couple of times. Well, I've taken it, uh, you know, and I worried, I wondered about it because it's called ecstasy, so it sounds like it's some kind of pernicious drug. But um, um, I asked a doctor about it after I took it, mm -hmm. and she said it, it's not dangerous. So it's the least dangerous of all the drugs. Right. It's probably the most therapeutic of all the drugs. Uh, I see kids ODing on that stuff, though. I know people don't OD. No, 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 not no, on no, ecstasy. No. Not on no. ecstasy. They were fucking. No, because it, they split. They split those pills with something else, and oh. also, yeah. and when they start splitting split them with caffeine and and LSD or whatever else they're touching that with, these yeah. kids are at the clubs and they're not they're not drinking water, and then they right. go out for the raves they go out to their car because they're not feeling good and they lose their friends they go out to the car and they found them in the car dead yeah. i used to do yeah, I yeah but do you see it, what it was it, and this is the reason why drugs should all of them should be legalized yeah. is that when they sell a drug and say oh here's ecstasy it really is maybe you know, of ecstasy and the rest of it is like you know fentanyl 
Yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah, and uh, that's uh, not good. But I I've had pure ecstasy. I had a woman who loved ecstasy, and she wanted me to try it with her, and it was uh, very nice. It was very nice. You know, I had a very nice time. I mean, like touching everything. You know, you feel like you have to touch stuff. But I d I didn't feel that it was dangerous on any level. You know. I used to be down the street from Larkin. I used to be at Ruby Sky all the time, and couple of ecstasy pills there so yeah ruby sky is not ruby sky anymore no it's uh some bowling alley or something now yeah. no they turned it into another music place but it's it's what's it's ruby sky more... because i think it's long after i left san francisco it's uh mason uh 420 mason yeah it was a it was a old old theater before really beautiful inside and then uh, friends of mine I knew they uh, bought that and they clubbed it, turned it into a, a club. You know, it's club. beautiful down in that part of town. And, and Ruby, I think Ruby and, Sky and was I, beautiful, I, but I, I don't know what happened. They, I they guess they well. went bankrupt I, I, and they yeah. sold it to this other company. And they, it's like a nightclub, but it's not nearly as nice as Ruby I, Sky. I think no, John Larkin will know what I'm talking about. I used to work at, uh, 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 what is it, Channel uh, 41, 44. Uh, KBHK. And KBHK, and they were in the old, uh, this building that was a, just a classic Art Deco building at the corner of Mason, I think Mason and O'Farrell, or, uh, or maybe yeah. was it Mason and O'Farrell. My father used to work there, and it used to be, believe it or not, Radio City, San Francisco. It was an yeah. NBC, it was NBC. It was the Blue Network and the Red Network, all in the same building. And I worked out of there doing the shows for KBH Channel 44. And I loved going into this big, they had this big studio that was their studio where they had a huge audience. Jack Benny would come up and do his show there. And had a big sponsor booth up high so the sponsors could sit there in luxury and watch the show and a control room. And my father used to play in the orchestra there. And I used to just go in there and kind of communicate with my dead father you know, because it was just a wonderful place to be. So kind of working in that building gave me a link to my father's history and, mm -hmm. to, and to all the wonderful stuff he did when he was uh, doing uh, radio shows and so on. So. Where was the building? Uh, it's, I think it's Mason and O'Farrell. It's it's uh, it, well, there's the Native Sons of California Well, if you building. look on the side of it, on the, or the front of it, actually, it's, it, it, it has a huge mosaic of a hand on a dial and then all the nations of the world that it's broadcasting out to. And I think that, that uh, thing is still there, if I'm not mistaken. No. No? It, that building's, uh, it's been remodeled now. It's well, I know they took away the, all the, all the uh, glass bricks that made up the windowing in the building. Yeah, it's... Um, I think it's, it was a restaurant, and then it was... Oh, um, Fusion or something like that now. Yeah, so now it's, it's another like restaurant. Night. Yeah. yeah, it's like a nightclub now. It's yeah, it's right next to the Native Sons of California building, which is part of where Ruby Sky was. Well, I had people with a lot of money, and we were thinking of buying that building, and literally turning it back into a broadcasting outfit, but also at night turning it into a nightclub, in which we do live radio shows with with orchestras and everything, you know. But it never came to be. It was just too expensive for our blood. But it was a, a beautiful building, just a beautiful building. All those buildings right there are beautiful and old, and and and, and parts of them were there, like the the building that Ruby Sky was in. Uh, much of that was from before the earthquake. Mm -hmm. It didn't yeah. completely collapse. Yeah, and they had all the stained stained glass art. All these yeah. people, they really beautiful inside. They did a really nice job restoring it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But Tony, I... uh, Tony's mom <laughs> decided to. Uh, Kind of she's fan. a Yankees <laughs> fan, huh? <laughs> she was a Mets fan, but she used to root for my Yankees when they were in the World Series. Oh, well, you, you better go get a Mets cap next time. Eh? We don't want to upset. But it's all right. She rooted for my Yankees because she knew I was a big Yankee fan. I was the only one in the house with like the. Do Yankees. you ever, at, at late at night, think she's still wandering through the house? I'm not gonna lie to you. The other day, I don't know if I told you. You know when you hear like I thought I heard like. I thought I heard something, and sometimes I do, you know when your eyes play tricks. And I said, this is, is that, by the way, this is pure New York. I told, like, yeah, I told you. Yeah, like, oh, that's just I nothing. I was the fan. I thought I, I. You ever think when you hear like somebody move or something, it's like the wind? I'm like, Ma, is that you? 
I play well, on you, you know, I mean, you had your mother in that house forever with you. Yeah, it almost feels like she's And then still when she's not there, it was like when you have a pet or a dog or cat and yeah. they die and they go away. All of a sudden, you feel like the animal's in the house somewhere. Is it, a str- is it, not, is it odd to feel like that, Alex? Yeah, I mean, no. sometimes I'll do like a double take. No, it's not like odd. It You're just crazy, that's all. That's true, too, yeah. <laughs> like, Who lives there with you? Don't haunt me, please. Just, just when my nuts, brother though. died, I did, that happened to me when my brother died. I, I kept on thinking I was seeing him like in my periphery. Yeah, I mean, like I was watching TV, the documentary, and I leave the kitchen light on, and think my brother called me on my cell, but I didn't get it. And then I thought, it like I had to call my eyes, it's, I thought I saw something, it was like a shadow, so it's not nothing. Your mind plays tricks on you, too, sometimes. Yeah, because it, it's like, yeah, it's like wishing they were still around or whatever. You're so right, yeah. Like, insert it into your like consciousness well i think all, that is a good point tony who's at the house with you now just you well we have the whole house we're not to rent upstairs so my brothers and me live downstairs on the first floor we renovated it so we're just going to keep this empty because we don't want to rent you don't need people to access you want to you want to rent the apartment out we don't want to do it because we don't want nobody in the house really with us yeah you don't want to do that no, I mean, you know, it's just oh, like your mom's you know, still there. <clears throat> well, you said you know, your brother and, and you were thinking of selling the house. Well, down the road when he retires, we were thinking about we may sell or we may buy something upstate and yeah. maybe keep the country. It. Yeah. Yeah, we want to go like an hour away, Kathleen. We're getting yeah. tired of the whole congestion of everything. But do you know something? Yeah. I got to tell you something quickly oh, because okay. we only got about two minutes left. But I, I, I went up to um, Mount Sinai today. Uh, okay. Because I had these tablets I wanted to deliver. No, uh, oh, that's a very wow. Jewish joke. I don't know if anybody. <laughs> no, but I went to Mount Sinai, the hospital, and uh, as opposed to Mount Sinai with the tablets. Yeah. And uh-huh. um, yeah, yeah, I went to Mount Sinai. I said to my doctor, "What do I got to do?" He says, "Take two tablets a day. Here they are." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but the traffic was unbelievable. And it hasn't been that way for a year. What I loved about COVID was if you got into like a lift and they dr- took you for a drive, there was nobody on the streets. You could fly down the streets. Now, people everywhere. It's back to the way it was. And I'm worried about that, you know? Yeah. I wonder how the numbers are going to be, Alex. I wonder like how the positive rate's going to be. Well, the positive rate's going down. So. It is going yeah, down. Yeah, it's down around 0.7 or something like that. Yeah. California's 0.9 right now. Point nine, yeah. Yeah. And, Positive on test. Oh, testing. Yeah, this is all of New York. N- New York City may be even less. I think mean, New York, its city, is point zero five, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, you know, we still had like seventeen deaths yesterday, so we got to wait for all those people on ventilators to go. You know, <laughs> well, really, the less people on ventilators. Uh, the ventilators. The, uh, the ventilators. Yeah. Hey! Well, 80% of people who go on a ventilator with COVID die. That's the statistic. So, you know, the less we have less ventilators every day that we're using. So eventually it's going to go down to zero because there's not going to be anybody on a ventilator. But, Don't put me on a ventilator. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a waste of good ventilator. Yeah. Ventilator. Yeah. Uh. Will Durst was on a ventilator for a couple of days. But yeah. anyway, hey, listen. Listen, the, the theme song. And you know, we got a lot of people watching tonight. Maybe Alan shouldn't call. Anyway. Come on. <laughs> what, what a nice bunch of people. I really enjoy you. I, uh, Brian, terrific. Charlie, always the best. Uh, um, Jeff, uh, love you to, to death. Um, uh, John Larkin, always a pleasure. Tony, I wouldn't have any comedy if it weren't for you. <laughs> Kathleen, I can't. What can I say about you, Kathleen? Well, I won't say it because you'll you'll, you'll file a suit against me. But anyway, but it's you know, we go back a long way. Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. Really, we do. It's amazing. We do. Yeah. Ninety-six October. Oh wow! And of course, uh, Ray Renati. Why don't you all give yourself a big. Uh, Wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, citizen panel. I'm scratching my head. Anyway, and uh, I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, some of them will go over and join Jack Bishop on the intersection right after we're through here. 
Why don't you go over and listen to the intersection after we're through here on our audio, which goes out 24-7, uh, which you can access using gabnet.net. And there's a little thing you can click on up there, and it'll, uh, it'll take you to our audio feed. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night, huh? Same, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, get vaccinated. And if you don't get vaccinated, then wear a mask. And if you're not going to wear a mask, fuck you. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. Be safe, okay? Okay.